Hi, everyone. It's my pleasure to be back at ABLF City, the wonderful virtual uh, setting for the ABLF Talks Live as your host for this session uh, that looks forward as we consider rethinking globalization, the new future. Now, as you're all painfully aware, the world is a different place as the global COVID-19 pandemic changes the way we live our lives day to day. Uh, it's meant a rethinking of relationships at every level, region to region, nation to nation, and even person to person. It's also highlighted how we perhaps look uh, or took many things for granted, uh, often simple things like gathering for celebrations or live concerts or conferences, even going to the cinema. And for those uh, cities that were known as major tourism or major events locations, it's meant a fairly dramatic uh, rethinking of strategy. So I'm honored to be joined today by someone who is at the sharp end of decision making in Dubai. His Excellency Najib Mohammed Ali is the Executive Director of Expo 2020 uh, Director Commission, uh, Ge Commissioner General's Office. And uh, that's, he's done all the uh, kind of intensive preparatory work for executing the Expo to make sure the country was ready for the big event. Mr. Najib was also the Executive Director of the Emirates Competitiveness uh, Council and served as the Director of Strategy and Policy in the UAE Prime Minister's Office, among other key positions. On the 1st of October, 2021, we will open the gates of Expo 2020 to the world. Smiling, confident, and proud as we stand ready, ready to connect, entertain, and inspire, ready to deliver on our promise. More than 190 countries have already joined us. As a nation where impossible is possible, prepares to celebrate its golden jubilee with the world. We never stop moving forward with hope, with care, and with pride. Always learning from one another and sharing new ideas that can build a better future for us all. Because great things can happen when we bring the world together. Expo 2020 Dubai, 1st of October 2021 to the 31st of March 2022. One year to go. Well, Your Excellency, uh, Najib Mohammed Al Ali, it's a real pleasure to have the chance to connect and talk with you about uh, what's going on. It's really great to have you, and uh, you know, apologies for whomever tried to log in last time for technology reasons it didn't work, but today it looks great. Thanks again for today. Yeah, so we always end up winning in the end, I think. Uh, listen, I cannot start to imagine the challenges you face, Your Excellency, just as the UAE prepared to greet millions of visitors. Uh, for the expo this year only to be hit so hard with the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it's obviously affected the way uh, the whole world is operating, but it was set to be a very special year for Dubai. And I'm wondering how you now see Expo 2020 uh, restructuring itself to be an even bigger venue for bringing the world together as a hub of hope and uh, collaboration for a better future as it's preparing to open its doors in, in October 2001, uh, 2021. Sorry. Uh, thanks again, Riz. I think uh, your question is well on the on the dot. And uh, uh, when we think of Expo 2020, and at the same time, if we think of COVID-19, we ought to go a little bit back in history and look at where the world exposition actually started. We need to go back to 1851. This was in London, the, fir the very first World Expo. At that time, if we really think of why did the Expo exist, it was all about bringing people together. It is all about exploring innovations, the latest innovations. If you wanted to see innovations at that time, you had to come to an expo. It's where you know the, the companies and countries and peoples actually saw uh, and saw the ideas coming to life. So it was all about having uh, uh, people gathering together. So when we talk about the word gathering together, uh, you are talking about uh, the opposite of what uh, COVID is actually doing to us. You know, it's about distancing in one way or another. So, um, uh, but eventually the way in which the human being operates, the humans do survive by coming together. Sooner or later, we will uh, get over this COVID-19. Sooner or later, people will strive and will come back to their uh, normal way of living and economies will get back into track and hopefully uh, you know, the Expo 2020 will be a great launching pad for so many businesses, so many countries, so many individuals to actually come together uh, here in 2021 to take us to the next level. The Expo 2020 and World Exposition in general is literally the only global event 
and I'm not talking about, you know, this is outside the sports initiative. It's the global, only a global event that is actually focusing on bringing people, corporations, countries together to better humanity. We had our uh, theme con is connecting minds, creating a future. And today with the COVID-19 situation globally, that theme is even more important. We are even thinking more about uh, linking the, the countries and the societies and ideas to be brought in uh, from Expo 2020 to the world. And we can't wait to host the globe here in Dubai. And the irony is that the Arab world is known for its hospitality, dating back you know, centuries, uh, in, even literally to the desert culture of strangers meeting in the middle of nowhere. And the hospitality was part of that culture. And I wonder how you can actually emphasize that when it comes to visitors coming from around the world that, you know, this part of the world, the, 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 the Gulf region, the Arab world is known for welcoming visitors, no matter how tough the circumstances may be. Yes, indeed. I mean, uh, when we think of uh, people coming around and specifically this region, as you mentioned, uh, uh, Riz, uh, this region is so known for its trade. Uh, historically, the people of this region, Dubai, the UAE and the region as a whole are very well known to travel. We started trade that focus on trade, brought goods and products to this region, and it went from this region to other parts of the world. To the, with today's economy that expanded so much. Now we're talking about having Dubai and the UAE uh, being a so such a strong uh, global hub by having so many different nationalities, different backgrounds, actually calling Dubai and the UAE a home. Uh, if we talk about this, uh, it, it is kind of the perspective of the globe into the UAE and Dubai. When we went into the bidding stage of Expo 2020, uh, and that was back in 2013. We did not only win to host uh, the expo, we won it with 116 votes globally. It was actually the highest number of uh, win of, of bids into a win in the history of uh, World Exposition since 1851. That is a testimony of the world actually trusting the UAE, trusting Dubai, that this is a perfect platform which brings cultures countries, nationalities, backgrounds together. And going back to your previous question, no better place than actually kickstarting, uh, uh, you know, opportunities across your country, across corporations uh, and individuals uh, in 2020 or Expo 2020, hopefully opening in October next year. Shalom, and congratulations on that historic vote uh, count that you received for the Expo for 2020. You raise an interesting point about trade in the region. And we know that the uh, pandemic has had a major impact on economies around the world. And I wonder what kind of business opportunity uh, Expo 2020 presents for all the, the, the visitors coming in and, and countries coming to be represented in, in every sense, literally in terms of business opportunities from multinationals, of course, to, to SMEs, the small and medium enterprises. Excellent question. I mean, maybe I'll link it to what I just said earlier. Uh, uh, Dubai and the UAE being always a business friendly environment. Uh, again, we were always about bringing people together, realizing ideas and making dreams come true. Um, with uh, the COVID situation at the moment, uh, or actually before I talk about the COVID, uh, the countries who are participating in our expo, even before COVID, always thought that this is going to be a place where opportunities can be realized. Um, many countries said, yeah, great, we would love to deal with corporations and find opportunities in the UAE, but no, we, we, our intention is beyond. We are interested in different uh, regions. We're, we're interested in the uh, Indian subcontinent. We're interested in Africa. So, and that, in a sense, is the true value of the Expo, bringing, bringing these opportunities to life. And with us here, uh, and now if I talk about COVID, the countries are now even in a, in a more dear requirement to actually have uh, to showcase their products, their services, their corporations, their innovations, showcasing their economy. I mean, many countries around the world are suffering, but uh, sooner or later they will come out. And this is a great platform for them to actually realize and show to the world what they have, what they can do, and what connections they can make. And let me give you maybe uh, more specifically to your question in terms of what we have done so far with SMEs and corporations at large. Uh, back in 2018, 
we launched what we called an online marketplace. This is a B2B, B2C, a B2G a kind of trading platform. At the same time, we have uh, always encouraged companies to register with us in our network from all over the world. And one interesting thing came uh, to light that 50%, and this is the latest uh, numbers we have back in uh, uh, a few months ago in June 2020, 50% of all of the companies who are registered are actually SMEs. So this is a great platform for SMEs uh, to realize their potential, for us to take things forward with them, and for everybody to launch. And maybe the last thing I can say here in terms of uh, next step, early in 2021, we will be launching uh, a B2B application. This is kind of a matchmaking platform. Of course, we will be here physically speaking, but we're also encouraging to use technology to make the best use out of anybody's time here with us in our expo during the six months. Interesting point you raise about um, the, the virtual world and how it's influencing the way we do things. I'll get back to Expo issues uh, a little later in the conversation. Let me ask you specifically, in, uh, you know, in, a, in a sort of more bro broad sense, if you like, about how uh, countries are adjusting to the new world, the new reality, as we see borders going up in some places and then virtual borders coming down in others. And I wonder how much you see self-sufficiency becoming an important part of uh, strategies for countries and cities and, and environments, purely because uh, the UAE, for example, has seen itself moving off dependency on, on fossil fuels and going into tourism and other aspects of business uh, as a hub, as a global hub. I wonder how you see that self-sufficiency becoming uh, a bigger and bigger priority and how the UAE and Dubai is moving towards that. When we think of self-sufficiency, and we, we probably also need to talk a little bit about globalization. Um, globalization is not a new phenomenon. It started perhaps in the new history. It has probably about uh, 100 years history, but its roots goes back to uh, more than 2000 years, uh, if we think of the Silk Road uh, back in China. Um, so today we are realizing that uh, many corporations, many countries focused on globalization, making sure that their products are reaching every single corner in the world uh, with having a cost that is uh, extremely competitive. But at the same time, we cannot forget the localization. There is always going to be a local element into these activities. Localization is key. And corporations and governments and people who are actually focusing on the local element, the local cultures, will always be able to have a cutting edge. And uh, uh, yes, you need to make sure that you're getting the benefits out of the globalization or a global environment, but at the same time, we need to be able to focus on the local environment. Coming to governments, whether it's the UAE or any other government in, uh, in, uh, in the world, they need to realize and support uh, the, uh, the platforms that they have, the corporations that they have, to be able to uh, strengthen the, uh, the, the sectors that they went, they, they, they went into. So if I think of the Expo 2020, Expo 2020 will exactly do that. Expo 2020 is not just a cultural show, it is also an opportunity for businesses to come together. It's an opportunity for us to showcase what the UAE and the region can do. And it's an interesting, you raise a, again an interesting point there. It's an interesting and blessed, uh, blessing uh, in terms of the UAE's position literally at the center of the world because it sits above Africa and then of course bridges east and west as well. And I wonder to what degree you can utilize that geographic advantage in terms of how you become a uniting force. We think of uh, uh, the economic powers in the world. I mean, historically, different regions of the world had uh, a different um, competitiveness in terms of the economies and outreach in the history. But if we go specifically into the World Expo, it has a history of, uh, of about 170 years, but this is the first time in history that there is actually an Expo uh, being hosted in the Arab world, in the Middle East, in South Asia, and in the African continent. That's a huge chunk of the world that never had a World Expo before. So this is in one way or another, our opportunity in this region to showcase our strength, showcase our culture, showcase our people, because this region is a region that is strong with its youth. It's a region that has a, a potential of a, a, a dynamic economy. And this is our opportunity, all of us, to actually push that envelope forward 
and utilize uh, uh, the, the platform of an expo in one way or another to showcase our corporations, our people, in the best way to, uh, possible so these corporations can become global. Because maybe I can give you one or two examples of how that can actually work. Because again, going back to your previous uh, example of SMEs, it's not only about large corporations, but also about the small uh, players on the ground, whether they are entrepreneurs, SMEs, uh, or even students who want to do something different in their own community in one way or another. We have a program called Expo Life. This program is a funding. Uh, we fund uh, different initiatives, projects around the world who have uh, ideas that relate to our theme. So we actually had five cycles so far and we had over 11,000 applications globally. And these came from pretty much all over the world. We're talking 184 countries. And we support them with uh, up to 100,000 US dollars of uh, a, a startup package for them to be able to make their businesses a reality. We funded uh, so far 140 grantees, and these came from about 75 plus uh, countries globally. But I'll give you one example to realize how that actually affects uh, a, a country's economy and how we can transport uh, or transfer some of these know-how from one region or one country to another. We found one of the projects that we funded is called Cool Corps, and this is from India. They had a simple idea, and this also relates back to what we talked about in terms of localization. They, the idea is a very simple idea of having solar powered cold rooms. It's a very basic technology. But what is fascinating with the idea is they will go to farmers who do not have the facilities to actually have coolers for their crops. So the idea is to reduce uh, the loss of uh, whatever they have from vegetables or fruits that they might have uh, in lost in logistics. So you can imagine, and I don't have numbers for India, but you can imagine the amount of wastage there is in, in, in such a thing. So a small initiative like this, and this can only happen when you have a local perspective into an, a business of this sort. Imagine the impact you can make on number one, the, uh, the small uh, farmers who actually have their own crops that they need, need to get into the market, uh, into the economy of the region uh, within India and the economy of, uh, of, of the contribution to the Indian economy. Of course, it's not going to come with, from one initiative, but this is a, one stepping stone towards it. And this kind of initiative, we would like to see more and more of these examples in our Expo 2020 to become a reality. And we would also like to see other countries benefiting out of this kind of an initiative for uh, uh, to realize other connections, to make other uh, possibilities or opportunities a reality. Interesting that uh, the, the issue of the, the new technologies, because Expo apart, I'm wondering how much you've seen the UAE, Dubai, um, the, the country in general, come together in terms of looking for new technologies, new initiatives, beyond just the showcase that you will have uh, through the Expo. As a, as a nation, it seems to be very progressive in terms of how it's gone for new technologies. Uh, I remember speaking with the, the Minister of Food Security and Water and discovering some amazing uh, projects that are occurring to to enhance food um, security again that many perhaps many people outside don't know about but it seems that the UAE has been very progressive in trying to get new technologies new ideas uh, fostered and grown beyond just the showcase uh, uh, Her Excellency Maryam the Minister of uh, uh, Food Security uh, we had many discussions with her, of course, uh, uh, it relates to food security relates to one of our sub themes, the sustainability, and we, we have a huge impact and emphasis on this area. And we will see many of the countries who are actually participating with us showcasing uh, food security initiatives. And uh, we would uh, hope for so many who would participate in our expo, not only the visitors, but also the business uh, and government uh, participants in the Expo 2020 to look into the offerings that we have, not only food security, but sustainability in general, and hopefully hoping for the best, not only for the UAE, the region, but the globe as, as a whole. Let me ask you, uh, at a personal level, what have been the biggest challenges for you having to shift and restructure and adjust 
based on the, the pandemic hitting so hard and so suddenly? I mean, I think it took everyone by surprise, but there was a lot on your plate personally in having to deal with the challenges of the change. Uh, what did you find to be the toughest aspect of that? When it comes to the World Expo, uh, Riz, you know, you, you're talking about a deadline you cannot shift. So everybody in the team, and we're not talking only about, uh, you know, the immediate team within Expo 2020, the whole country and I mean, government or other stakeholders, everybody was such so geared towards the opening at October uh, 20, uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, so when COVID hit and when we needed to, to do this change, it's obviously not a simple thing on anybody. Uh, everybody needed to readjust. Everybody needed to work towards the new date. And it's not only us, also the participating countries. The participating countries also need to do that change. And uh, in fact, the, the decision for us to actually change did not come from us. We needed to take this up into the General Assembly of the BIE, the responsible party for the World Exposition, and the, the uh, participating countries, they actually voted into having this postponement of our expo from 2020 to hopefully opening our doors on the 1st of October, 2021. Uh, a question had come in uh, from those watching and it, and it asks and it touches on a point you raised earlier. It says, in the uh, alternative case for globalization, what would be some key factors that you see that the international community would focus on uh, to adapt to minimize interdependence. When, when we thought, when we're thinking of inter, uh, interdependencies, uh, we we need to think of how we were structured in terms of working methodology, whether it's a government, whether it's a corporation, or whether it is us as individuals. And uh, uh, the COVID situation globally is teaching all of us that the norm sometimes is changing, uh, but the principles should always remain the same. When we are thinking of doing business, the principles of doing business, in my opinion, will not change. People will still get together. People will still try, uh, will still trade uh, across boundaries and people will still uh, connect with, the, with each other to get the best ideas to surface. So this will not change. So in one way or another, COVID-19 is a, a hump in our journey as humanity. And with Expo 2020, we can actually help uh, people. And I, start, I always like to start with people because that's the main thing with, with everything uh, we are doing in, in Expo. People, corporations, governments, uh, NGOs, and so on and so forth, they can all look into the Expo 2020 as one mechanism to uh, take everything back into normal, uh, even if the new re reality is slightly different for a while. Your Excellency, of course, it's great to have you at the ABLF uh, uh, live talks because, of course, it's had to go virtual, but it has still had such great participation. And I think one of the things that it showcased is the connection between the, the world in the Gulf and, uh, and its neighbors, uh, South Asia in particular, India in particular. And there's been a lot of support from both sides. And I wonder, given that historic relationship that uh, the Gulf region and the UAE in particular has with South Asia and India in particular, what the, the Expo can do in terms of you know, building that relationship and how in particular it's important for that region? Think of uh, uh, the region itself, but maybe specifically India, as you said. India uh, has a focus uh, with their direction and they're uh, emphasizing that in their own pavilion. Uh, to what our expo is talking about. They're talking about the strength of, hum of the human resources in India. It's such a big thing for India, and it's probably a big thing for the region. Um, and they will be showing that very much strongly in, 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 in their pavilion here in our expo. Um, obviously, they will speak about so many other things, such as the, uh, the nation space program uh, and many other uh, innovations in India. But if we go back into that, human resources, that focus on people. Um, it is one of the areas that many countries in, uh, in Asia, in our region, pretty much the region I spoke to you about who had, didn't have the chance to host an expo before, to realize their human potential. There is so much energy uh, in, 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 in these countries, in our region. There is so much potential in our regions. Uh, I think we may have lost you for a moment there. Your Excellency, you still there? 
We're just checking to see if uh, Mr. Najib Mohammed Al-Ali is still with us. Give us a moment and we'll see if we can reconnect with him. The technology may have jinxed us again. We'll see. Let's just check. Is he, is he there? Well, we'll give it a moment. If not, um, I'll, I'll wrap up this part of the session. We were getting towards the end anyway, but uh, um, His Excellency made some excellent comments about how Dubai and the UAE is gearing up for the uh, the postponement that, uh, that occurred over a year because of the COVID pandemic and how Expo 20, uh, 2020 is now ready to go in October 2021 with all its, um, with all its various facets uh, all in order. And I'm sure uh, the team has had to work very hard to get there. So um, we'll give it a minute. And if we can't get um, Najib Mohammed uh, Al-Ali back, then what I will do is I'll pass over to the ABLF uh, team and uh, get you ready for the next session here. Uh, on the, the the live talk, so let's uh, let's see what's happening and uh, see if I get any indication on what's going on with the uh, the connection with uh, His Excellency. Rafael, I don't know if you guys can hear me. Ah, we got you back there. So we lost you for just a moment. So please go on ahead. You were making an interesting point there about how, uh, in specific, uh, specifically India had been uh, gearing up for this uh, this uh, you know exhibition as well. I don't know how much you heard of, uh, of what I was saying, but uh, I was referring back into India's participation in Expo 2020 with having a focus on the human resources. And that is probably a common theme in, in many countries in the Asian uh, continent, uh, with having a great potential of uh, uh, youth, great energy in those countries, and with uh, a platform like an Expo 2020, uh, all of our countries in this region can showcase the best out of what we have. And uh, of course, when it comes to India specifically, it's not only going to showcase the, the strength of the human resources that they have, but they will also look into the, uh, the sophisticated technologies as the nation's uh, um, uh, space program back in India. So uh, the Expo 2020 is, is meant uh, to showcase this region in the best way by having, as I mentioned earlier, hosting the World Expo in this region. It is our opportunity to showcase the best of the region to the world. So I think there's time to squeeze in a quick question from one of uh, our participants who's watching the conversation going on. Fatima Khuzema says, has COVID-19 altered the programs that were originally scheduled for Expo 2020? And will there be scope for an innovation or innovation in terms of the post-pandemic effect on the globe? Of course, I mean, uh, we are we are no different than anyone else. We need to adapt things. Oh, I hope we haven't lost uh, His Excellency again. Um, let's just give it a moment. We only have a couple of minutes left because uh, we have to run to time for our next session. So let's see if we can get uh, Najib Mohammed Al Ali back. Just checking here. I think we may have lost you, uh, Mr. Najib. I'm not sure if you can still hear me. But I think I may have to uh, wrap up if we don't get you back pretty soon. But just so you know, he was answering a question that had come in from Fatima Khuzema, who said, uh, who had asked whether the COVID-19 pandemic had altered the programs that were originally scheduled for Expo 2020 and how it would affect the scope for innovations in the uh, in the event. We did get from uh, His Excellency how the, uh, the the Expo 2020 is gearing up for uh, for its uh, launch in October 2021. I like to think of it as Expo 2020 plus now, um, as it's so strongly branded to that idea. Um, I'm going to wrap it up here because I think we've got, we've got about a minute before the next uh, session. And ironically, it's uh, the Minister of Food Security and Water, the wonderful uh, um, uh, uh, Mariam al uh with whom I've had the pleasure of having conversations in the past about how the UAE is gearing up for its food security issues. And she mentioned to me some of the amazing uh, developments and programs they have for sustainability in the UAE, including growing of uh, certain crops, for example, blueberries that were never known in the region. As you can imagine, the innovations needed to create um, that kind of level of adjustment to the kind of crops grown uh, in the UAE is quite phenomenal. So there are some, going to be some wonderful ideas and examples I'm sure she's going to share with you in, in just a moment when that session goes live. I'm going to thank uh, His Excellency Najib Mohammed Al-Ali for joining us and discussing how things have changed as we uh, rethink globalization and the new future. Uh, and I'll hand you back over to the ABLF team. It was a real pleasure to be here for the session. I apologize we lost him just a little prematurely there, but um, I'm sure you'll enjoy the rest of the talk. So stay tuned and see you again soon. Mm -hmm.